That big breaking news coming in. The hearing is on on the NIA plea for death penalty for former terrorist Yasin Malik. The NIA has told the court that Yasin Malik is behind the killing of the four Air Force personnel, Air Force senior officers, in fact. In incriminating material, including documents and electronic devices, were seized from him. This is big news coming in. Remember, this is uh, the Delhi High Court that's uh, hearing the national investigations plea seeking a death penalty for Kashmiri secessionist leader who's been a former terrorist as well, associated with the Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front, the JKLF terror group. Yasin Malik uh, was uh, convicted in a terror funding case a few, few uh, years ago and sentenced to life imprisonment. Kanu Sard, our legal correspondent, joins us for the latest on that. Kanu, go ahead. Uh, what, is, uh, what are we hearing from the hearing that just started from the court? Uh, yes, Pooja, the hearing is underway. When we speak, uh, Solicitor General of India, Sushar Mehta, is appearing for the National Investigating Agency before the High Court and has told that, you know, how Yasin Malik was deeply involved in all the uh, terrorist activities in Jammu and Kashmir, how he was responsible for kidnapping Rubaya Saeed at one point of time and how the, the kidnapping of four personnel, uh, four, how, how he was involved in uh, the murder murder of uh, four Air Force personnel and everything. And uh, the NIA is expressing in, his, in their plea that, you know, that uh, the, since Yasin Malik has pleaded guilty and that is the main reason why his, uh, he was given a life sentence by a trial court, is not should not become a precedent before uh, for other 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 cases. So NIA is saying that you know since he has pleaded, that doesn't uh, make his charges less. Hmm. That is why the NIA is has filed an appeal and seeking for a death penalty in the case. This is a very important point that you're telling us. Stay on with me, Kanu Sarda, because uh, uh, what uh, the Solicitor General uh, has said that you get your training from Pakistan, uh, you you indulge in all these activities. And then you plead guilty, and then you be in jail, and then you claim that uh, you should be let go. That is, that does not stand. And the charge sheet also says he's pleaded uh, guilty. Uh, this was with regard to the Indian Air Force officers, remember, who uh, had died in the line of duty, who were killed, and uh, the accusations uh, coming directly on Yasin Malik on that. This is a big moment, remember, very important hearing. Kanu, do tell us about it because the focus, in some ways has been over uh, the, the whole issue of death penalty for Yasin Malik. Mehbooba Mufti had said that's, that shouldn't happen. There are many specifically from the Kashmiri Pandit community that have uh, also supported the death penalty. So there are different reactions coming in from that. Well, what, are you, what are you hearing about the hearing right now as, a, as and when more details are coming in? Kanu. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Pooja, the hearing is uh, still underway, but uh, what is NIA has said that, you know, a message should not go amongst the people that who indulges in these kind of activities that by pleading guilty, you can escape your uh, charges. Uh, so in this case, the trial court, though, had, uh, con uh, was convinced that, you know, he has committed a lot of, a uh, lot of uh, things and he has been convicted under several charges in U UAPA, but still, uh, the, uh, the death penalty was not given only on the basis that since he has pleaded guilty. So this is the main contention which has been raised by, uh, by the Solicitor General before the High Court that it should not become a precedent so that the, the message should not go down in the line that, you know, if you plead guilty, even if you commit an offence and if you plead guilty, you, uh, you, your, uh, uh, your punishment can be lessened. So it is basically on these grounds the, the, the arguments are, are being made right now. Actually, the issue, uh, remember, uh, has been on the terror funding charges, isn't it? Because, yes, he has been a known uh, former terrorist. He was associated with the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front. I remember he was part of uh, not only inciting violence, uh, he had uh, then later claimed to become a Gandhian of sorts, but his uh, activities were, are very well known. But how is it, how important is this hearing right now? Is this primarily about the terror funding issues or is this going beyond that as well? No, this is the hearing is uh, right now going. Uh, uh, the, the, the Solicitor General is explaining the conduct of Yasin Malik over the years. Okay. He, they have cited that how the JKLF then came came into existence since 1974. Hmm. Then how uh, how what was the role that Yasin Malik used to play, and hmm. how ISI was active 
uh, in the whole uh, uh, terrorist yes. activity in the Jammu and Kashmir. So the arguments for me uh, are being made ar uh, around this right now. So Kanu Sardar is tracking all the latest. I want to add here what's happening in the court is not just about the terror funding or the Indian Air Force personnel killing, but Yasin Malik has also been accused of abducting Rubaya Saeed. Remember, she was the daughter of the then Home Minister Mufti Mohammad Saeed, father, uh, sister of uh, Mehbooba Mufti. And it had eventually, because of that abduction, she was rescued. But it had led to the release of major big known terrorists who were involved later in 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks mastermind. So this must be remembered of the sort of involvement that Yasin Malik was in with regard to Jammu and Kashmir specifically. Thank you so much, Kanu Sarda, for the latest.